Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. We're back in our in-studio live series today uh, looking at vintage aircraft model kits and I'm going to declare National Aurora Week in my hobby shop which I'm going to name Hobby Rama West and we're going to tell you three stories about Aurora models that I think you're going to find very interesting. These models occupied a very special place in the universe of uh, the golden age of vintage modeling back in the 1950s. We're going to tell you why right now. The beginning of the Aurora story is right here with the famous fighters of all nations. This is when Aurora was being produced in Brooklyn, New York before they moved to West Hempstead, Long Island. These kits were the pioneers for what was to come in the Aurora model lineup. Let's take a look at one of the kits that came from that lineage. By the late 1950s, America was in the space race. And one of the Aurora models that really brought that into focus was the X-15 Satelloid airplane. This was a rocket-powered research aircraft built by North American Aviation in Inglewood, California. And in the quest to have the first of any model on the market, Aurora jumped in and went with what they thought the airplane would look like. Now there's an interesting mystery to this. The airplane kit is molded in white plastic where the real airplane was black for heat absorption and it doesn't look like the real airplane. In this photo you see on the screen is the actual airplane in prototype early uh, configuration and here's a later shot of it as it was operational in the 1960s flying to speeds as high as Mach 6. But why didn't Aurora's kit look like the real airplane? The answer lies in Aviation Week magazine, where Aurora saw a three-view drawing, as you see here on the screen, and used that as a template to make their model, even though it didn't look anything like the real airplane. They were first on the market. Ravel's kit came later. Ravel's kit, seen here, is much closer to the actual aircraft. Now Aurora had a problem. So what they did was they hired Jack Lenwood to do the box art, and this represented the 1962 reissue of the satelloid plane with box art that looked like the real airplane. However, inside the box, the plastic was in black, and here's a shot of the buildup. It was the original satelloid X-15, and that's the mystery of why Aurora's kit never really looked like the real airplane. Today, a cult collectible, valuable in its own right, and a piece of history from Aurora's model kingdom in the 1950s. The next story to tell you is about the Ryan X-13 VertiJet. This was a VTOL jet-powered aircraft, first flew in 1957 at Edwards Air Force Base, as you see in these photos. It was a very successful airplane in its day. It took off vertically, transitioned to horizontal flight, flew at speeds in excess of 500 miles an hour, transitioned back to the vertical, and landed on the trailer. And it represented the uh, epitome of VTOL technology in 1957. The packaging of the X-13 was really special. It was a beautiful cover by Joe Catula, and uh, here you can see the box showing the airplane in action. Uh, you see here an original box with the uh, parts in a poly bag to protect them from uh, becoming missing. You will notice that the airplane is molded in silver while the Fruhoff trailer is molded in yellow. And this actually operated with hydraulic arms that raised the trailer to the vertical position. It was a beautiful model. It was one of Aurora's best. It cost $1.98, which was a princely sum in those days. But you really got your money's worth out of this beautiful kit. Not to be outdone, Ravel Models of Venice, California came up with their own X-13, which in every way was bigger and better than Aurora's. But there's a surprise ending to the story. Ravel's X-13 was in 132nd scale. It was molded in the two colors as well. It included a ground tug with crew figure, and the model was fully active in terms of operating controls from the cockpit, a removable jet engine. Uh, it was an amazing kit, and this was to be in concert with Ravel's giant F-102 with ground equipment. These kits sold for $2.98. Just as Ravel was getting ready to produce the X-13 model, President Lou Glazer decided that they would not go into production. The reason being that the giant F-102 kit was not selling all that well. Uh, to solve that problem, they went ahead and eliminated the ground equipment and reissued the kit as just the airplane for $1.98, as you see here. But even though Ravel had progressed to the stage of a prototype buildup, they decided against going into production with the kit, 
leaving Aurora as the sole producer of Orion X-13 VertiJet. While Ravel models had some beautiful first-generation jetliners, like the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8, they were rather petite in size, they were box scale, and where Aurora got the jump on the market was with much larger airliner models priced at $2.49. It was a lot of plastic back in the day. Some were more accurate than others. If you built these kits, you'll remember that the Condor 880 and the Boeing 707 were not quite uh, up to standard in terms of looking like the real airplane. But there was an exception, and that was the Douglas DC-8 jetliner, which Aurora built as a beautiful model, one of the best they've ever done. It really felt like the airplane. It had the lines of the airplane. And unlike Ravel, which offered different airline markings in different decal sheets for 10 cents a piece, uh, the Aurora solution to that problem was to issue separate model kits of each DC-8. Some of the rare ones were Eastern, TransCanada, and the more popular ones were Delta, United, Pan Am. This really represented the, uh, the best of the best for first generation jet airliners in the early 1960s. Let's take a look at a Delta DC-8 from Aurora. They did a beautiful job of packing these models. You'll notice the original tissue uh, which protects the plastic parts from being scratched. Uh, the decal sheet was really dramatic with uh, big large red, white, and blue markings. The direction sheet and a uh, little catalog is in the box as well. Really a nice uh, arrangement for $2.49 and again a beautiful model of the airplane. Aurora used a variety of images for their DC-8 box art. Some were photographs like this United DC-8 some were uh, beautiful renderings of the airplane, like the Delta DC-8, and some were artist concepts before the airplane ever flew, as you see here with the Eastern Golden Falcon DC-8. But all in their own way were very dramatic depictions of the airplane, especially for a large kit costing $2.49. I'd like to talk about the Delta kits in particular, because you see one here in cello wrap, which was completely original, and one un unwrapped uh, with a much brighter cover. And I just want to make the point, and I know this is a personal thing for collectors, but the cello wrap is completely original. The unwrapped one is a lot prettier to look at. Which one would you prefer? Feel free to leave a comment below. And there you have it. A loving look at the great Aurora products from the mid to late 1950s. And the beautiful models produced by this wonderful company from West Hempstead, Long Island, New York, in the golden age of modeling. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We have many more to bring to you on the live in-studio series of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Mashat. Until next time, take care.